How Big Macintosh wished he was taking Applejack's delivery route instead. Although a fur swamp was dangerous and hostile, a pony could wear a set of burn-resistant hoof boots to protect themselves, or develop a kind of sixth sense for when flames were about to erupt out of the ground after many, many delivery runs. Even if said fire swamp was home to a chimera that had acquired a taste for pony meat somewhere, a pony could either outwit, outrun, or, if the pony in question were physically capable enough, outmatch the tri-headed beast. The fire swamp, for all its perils, was predictable. Big Macintosh's route took him through town and, just as it left, past Lyra and Bonbon's house. And if there was one thing Lyra Hardstrings was not, it was predictable. Lyra was outside, leaning over a fence post when Big Macintosh passed their house. She made a deliberate effort to catch his eye. Hey ho, Big Mac, Big Macintosh! What's up with you? She aimed both forehooves at him in an odd pointing gesture. How's it hanging? How's it swinging? How's it... Oh, hey, you got a sec? She rapidly changed tone when she noticed Big Mac was about to walk right by her. He slowed to a stop and gazed at the unicorn. Whatever time he lost here, he could make up somewhere later on his journey. Okay, cool, Lyra said and then took a surreptitious glance over both shoulders, as if she was afraid of some pony eavesdropping on this transaction. Listen, Chief, you got a special sun pony? Big Mac shook his head. After that weird business with Miss Cheerilee, and that even weirder business with that doll, he had taken pains to avoid any situations that might not leave him with full control of his senses, and that included the mares of Ponyville. Right on, right on. Lyra nodded her head. So, okay, just hear me out on this. Just, like, let me get to the end before you interrupt me. <laughs> she gave a chuckle, like she had made a private joke. Mac expected she may have, and it may have been at his expense. He narrowed his eyes a little, signaling her to hurry up with whatever it was she wanted to say. Okay, okay. Lyra continued, waving a dismissive hoof in his general direction. So, Bon Bon has a birthday coming up, right? And she's kinda sort of been dropping all these hints that she'd like to, you know, get with a stallion. Lyra reached over the fence and tapped Big Mac on the shoulder. You know what I mean, eh? She'd, uh, like her field cloud, if you get my drift. She's interested in riding the six-legged horse. She'd be doing some magic with some pony's other horn. She's down for some old in and out, in and out, is what I'm saying. She wants you know what to be put you know where. We on the same wavelength? You feel me, brother? They had been on the same wavelength since the first euphemism. Big Mac's expression remained unchanged, but he tilted his head marginally to the side to indicate for Lyra to go on. All right, so, and, and this would be totally casual, one shot, no strings attached kind of deal. So I'm trying to bring some unattached and available stallion to just sort of swing by and bang her like a barn door in a summer hurricane. Lyra raised her eyebrows. So, what do you say? Are you in? Leaving aside the fact that any farmer worth their salt would secure any loose barn doors prior to a hurricane, summer or otherwise, Big Mac raised a curious eyebrow at Lyra's request. He didn't spend the most time in Ponyville, so he often was among the last to know of any major town gossip. But he was pretty sure Lyra and Bon Bon's living arrangement hadn't changed since the last time he had seen them at the marketplace together buying tulips. No, no, no! We're totally still together! Lyra said. We're solid, like a rock, made of metal. And, uh, don't you be worrying none. I'm totally leaving her satisfied in the bedroom department. She nudged his shoulder again. No complaints on that end, eh? You know what I mean? When Lyra Heartstrings gets down to business, she takes care of business, you dig? She threw up her hooves in a gesture of confusion. What about just, I don't know, has had this thing about dongs recently. A grin spread across her face. <laughs> dongs. Big Mac's forehead developed a slight crinkle and his mouth a slight downward turn at one side. This was starting to sound mighty sketchy. No 
know. It'll be totally cool. Trust me. I don't have to be there at all if you don't want. Or I can be. If that's your thing. Like, we could start to kick down and you can join in when... That was just about Big Macintosh's limit for Lyra that day. He started to walk on. Lyra kept pace with him behind the fence, frantically ratcheting up her sales pitch. Toys! She exclaimed. We got a bunch of toys that do all kinds of freaky stuff. Like a whole box almost. I mean, most of them wouldn't really apply to you, though. Or, I don't know, that sort of depends on how open-minded you are about some stuff. She sighed and pleaded with her eyes. <sighs> Come on, please! Big Macintosh's answer was simple and final. Darn it! Lyra said to announce her presence as she went back inside the house. Why were you out there bothering Macintosh? Bonbon bon asked, not looking up from her taffy mixture. Oh, uh, you know. Lyra hovered at the kitchen door. I'm sure I don't. You know, that old balls thing. I'm not sure how he's going to help with that, dear. Well, Bonnie, I know you don't have, like, a whole lot of experience in this field, but when a mayor and a stallion love each other very much... Bonbon bon paused in kneading her taffy, letting the sticky substance drip between her hooves. She looked over her shoulder at Lyra. What are you talking about? I was asking Big Mac if he would knock you up. What? Since you said that thing about having foals together. What? He said no, though. What? Bon Bon's temper had escalated rapidly from neutral into high gear faster than Lyra could ever remember. Her face had become almost as red as the taffy pooling in a heap on the kitchen counter. Lyra! She shouted. When I said we should get some help from some pony, I meant Twilight Sparkle! Huh? What? Because she knows every spell ever. And probably knows one so we can have a fold together. Oh. Lyra's face went slack. Have you? Bonbon bon asked with narrowed eyes. Been asking random stallions off the street to come and have sex with me? No, maybe. Not in so many words. Not, um. Lyra looked at the kitchen floor. Not many. How many is not many? Well, Big Mac, Caramel, Time Turner, uh, Pokey Pierce, I think that's all. No, wait, Noteworthy, and, um, Tenport. Lyra, that's like half the stallions in Ponyville! Bonbon bon freed her hooves from the taffy and used them to bury her face. Ugh, you know I have to live here, right? I'm sorry, I really thought that you meant that. I'm sorry. Lyra put a comforting hoof on Bonbon's bon shoulder. Time Turner might have been, but then his girlfriend showed up and he changed his tune right after that. I don't know if that makes me feel any better, you know. How about we go see Twilight tomorrow? Together! Bonbon bon nuzzled Lyra's cheek softly, then gave her a look. This wasn't the most boneheaded thing Lyra had ever done, not by far. It somehow wasn't even the most embarrassing. She just had a knack for putting her hoof in her mouth repeatedly. Lyra sometimes didn't know why it was Bonbon bon kept putting up with her, but she was glad that she did. Maybe, Bonbon bon said at last. I'm sure Twilight has a spell that'll give me a wang. That's not what I meant. I thought it would be like a, a magical donor thing, where... She paused. Lyra noted the faint red coloration that had crept across her cheeks, and this time it had nothing to do with anger. There's a spell that can do that? Lyra smirked. Probably. Like, Twilight probably knows all sorts of spells that can do all sorts of wild stuff. She lowered her voice and drew out her words. I mean, some of them might not even be so hard to learn. She could probably teach one or two of them to me. Bonbon said nothing, the blush on her face intensifying. But, uh... Lyra continued... We should probably just ask the boring save spell that takes a bit of me and magically mixes him with a little bit of you to make a... No, no. Bonbon bon said in a small voice. We could, um, ask about the other stuff, too. If you want. 
Bonbon bon pressed herself up against Lyra, any momentary anger forgotten. Just, honey, one thing. Yeah? Don't say Wang in front of the princess. You are a nun, and you completely forgot what day it was until right this moment. Having just finished locking your front door, you could only stand there on your porch and stare down at the horrid pink thing that is before you. Despite barely coming up to your waist, her presence is enough to send a shiver of fear down your spine. The fact that she is currently giving you the largest smile you have ever seen just adds to the fact. You remain frozen for a moment, hoping that her vision is solely based on movement. It is sadly not, as she continues to stare up at you while hopping in place. Defeated, you sigh and release your grip on your doorknob. <sighs> what do you want this time, Cadence? You already know the answer. After all, it just so happens to be that day of all days. If at all possible, the pink alicorn's smile grows even wider. My name is Cadence the True and Fair, she chirps in a sing-song voice. I'm here to find your mare. Your eye twitches. Oh god, she's doing a fucking bit, isn't she? Yes, yes she is. You can hear the faint music and everything. God damn it, you aren't in the mood for this right now. Rubbing the bridge of your nose, you groan in annoyance. Cadenza. Cadence. Oh, Cadence. Please, I'm not in the mood to deal with this today. I just want to go and pick up a fucking pizza, okay? You step around her fat ass and head off down the path toward Ponyville. As you walk, you silently pray to yourself. Please let her get the hint. Please let her get the hint. Please let her get the... God damn it! And she's suddenly right beside you, hop skipping along as happy as can be. Looks like it's going to be one of those days again. You try to ignore her as best you can, but this proves difficult as she starts up with her shit again. Don't worry, Anon. We'll find one yet. We'll find a mare and you'll be set. Christ, she's annoying enough to begin with, but today of all days... Oh, it's getting even worse. Like Celestia during a solar eclipse, or Luna during a blood moon levels of worse. And why is it always directed at me? Stupid Cadence and her hearts and hooves day. As Ponyville comes into view in the distance, Cadence gives you a curious look. Would you like them young or old? Just ignore her. Maybe, if you're lucky, she'll get bored and go away. Or she'll catch sight of some couple in need of her love magic. Unperturbed by your silence, Cadence hums as she looks around at the ponies that are walking around town. Would you like them warm or cold? Now let's see, where was that pizza place again? Two blocks down from Sugar Cube Corner, uh, or three blocks? Ugh, oh, crap, I can't remember and I really don't want to be out longer than necessary. Especially with Slutbutt as my shadow. You're trying to recall the exact address of your destination when Cadence suddenly appears in front of you before shoving a random mare right in your face. Would you like them with some tuft? Cadence asks, holding the blushing mare in such a way that her chest fluff is prominently on display. Recovering from your surprise, you glare down at the annoying pink beast. Cadence, no. Stop. Would you like them kinda rough? You blink. Somehow, the mare in her hooves has completely changed. Now she's holding a lean mare whose thighs look like they could crush a watermelon with little to no effort. This mare, unlike the first one, doesn't look too pleased with the situation she found herself in and is now glaring up at you. Running a hand down your face, you sigh and step around Cadence and the preferred mare. Sadly, you only manage to make it a few feet before Cadence is in your face again. Flying backward, she gives you a critical look. Do you like them big or small? Do you like them short or tall? <sighs> you open your mouth to tell her to fuck off, but suddenly get a better idea. 
pointing at a random pony in the distance, you say quickly, I like the looks of that mare over there. <gasps> Cadence gasps and spins around excitedly. You take that moment to duck beneath her and dart down a nearby alleyway. Chancing a look behind you to make sure she didn't follow you, you step out the other side, into the marketplace. And lo and behold, you can see the pizza joint at the far end of the plaza. Only a few blocks stand between you and that sweet, cheesy goodness. Waiting a few more seconds, just to be sure you're safe, you step out of the alleyway and nonchalantly make your way across the... Oh, God damn it! Would you? Could you? Please don't bolt! Cadence asks from her perch atop your shoulders. If not a mare, how about a colt? Looking more like an overgrown parrot than a princess, she leans over your head to peer at you upside down. You glare up at her. We've been over this, you overgrown buzzard. I'm not interested in colts or mares at the moment. All I want right now is a fucking pizza. Now leave me alone. Waving your arm about, you manage to shake her loose. Instead of listening to your request, though, she begins to prance around you in a circle as you walk. You may like them. You'll see. Perhaps you'll like them in twos or threes? She chirps happily. She jumps in front of you, her eyes sparkling with eagerness. A herd! A herd! A herd! A herd! Could you? Would you? Join a herd? Stopping, you bend down slowly and stare into Cadence's eyes. I'm not joining a fucking herd, Cadenza. Before she can answer, you pick her up bodily and dump her into the nearby fountain with a resounding splash. You manage to make it a good block and a half before she shows up again. You're making your way through a small playground when she pops out of a bush, completely dry and ready for more. Say, in the park? You're in the park? Would you search for a mare in the park? If it's not food, I'm not interested. You growl, a little venom now making its way into your voice. Not stopping, you continue on by her, only for her to pop out of another bush a little further down the way. Damn it, it was bad enough when Pinky did shit like this. You don't need a second reality-bending pink abomination following you around now. Would you? Could you? With some butter? She asks, her hooves behind her back. I swear to God, Cadenza, if you so much as You may like this volunteer, Flutter. If that's okay with you. Fluttershy smiles up at you timidly, a small blush on her face. You notice she has on a bead necklace, little plastic hearts running along her neck. She's also wearing a pair of underwear that look like they are made out of a thin red plastic. Those... Those are fucking edible panties! With a deadpan face, you slowly pick Fluttershy up in your arms. She gasps, her eyes widening, before she quickly nuzzles your chest. Cadence has the largest shit-eating grin on her face right now. You can see hearts in her eyes, even as she scrunches her face up with joy. The joy quickly turns to horror as you unceremoniously dropkick Fluttershy through the air. She sails off through the air, barely clearing the top of the trees before she disappears from view. Cadence yelps before taking off, hurriedly following after Fluttershy. You take this moment of peace and quiet to finish making your way to the pizza place. It's fairly empty inside of Jesus crusts, and given the day you aren't that surprised, most ponies are probably out with their special someones right now enjoying romantic picnics or something. It only takes you a minute to place your order, and the teenage mare with acne behind the counter gives you an odd look when you proceed to order one large with cheese, one large with half onions and half pineapple, one with onions, mushrooms and green peppers, and a fourth one with three different peppers, four kinds of cheese, and ranch drizzled on top. Whatever, pepperoni face. Judging by her weight, she's finished off several pizzas by herself. Oh no. Hangry Anon is starting to get loose. They better hurry it up. About three minutes into waiting for them to finish your order, you feel something tugging on your pant leg. You glance down, only to curse and stare up at the ceiling. For fuck's sake. Cadence is back. Would you? Could you? With a fox? 
She points at a fox pony hybrid that is currently walking in front of the store window. You say nothing and continue to stare ahead. Would you, could you, with some hawks? The two griffins sitting at the corner table give her a dirty look before returning to their pizza. Cadence's brow furrows slightly. Would you? Could you? With some pugs? Cadence hovers in front of you now, trying to catch your eye. The diamond dog behind the counter cocks her head, her ears perked in confusion. You cross your arms. Would you? Could you? With some thugs? Luckily, the Minotaurs currently placing their order don't hear her, because those two girls look like they could bench-press three of you for fun. Cadence's eyes narrow. A look of determination flashes across her face, and her tail begins to twitch back and forth quickly. And then, things proceed to get weird. We're in this line lined up like ants. Would you, could you, drop your pants? This causes you to finally look down at her. God damn it! All I wanted was to get some food! You can eat if you so choose, she answers eagerly, her hips swaying back and forth. You're debating whether or not it's worth waiting for your pizza anymore, regardless of the fact you've already paid for it. Luckily, for once it seems luck is on your side, as the mayor behind the counter calls out your name. Four pizzas for a non a mouse? Yes, thank Christ Almighty. Stepping forward, you gather your pizza and, without a backward glance, make your way for the door. Now you just have to get home and you'll be safe. Your house is enchanted so that not even the alicorns can get in without your permission. Annoying as she might be, Luna's still a bro for that. Wiggle wiggle, ooh woo. Carrying your pizzas carefully, you make your way down the road as quickly as possible without jostling your precious load. You get many strange looks from the surrounding ponies, but you're pretty sure that's not because of you, but rather the bundle of pink idiocy that is currently hurrying along beside you. She won't shut up. Would you, could you, in my throat? Her tongue hangs out as she attempts to show you the back of her mouth. Would you, could you, make me bloat? Ooh-woo! Piss off! You huff, weaving through the crowd. As you pass by Berry's store, Cadence takes one look in the window and grins. Would you, could you, with some hooch? A little booze to get some cooch? Are you deaf as well as dumb? Piss off! She darts out in front of you, nearly tripping you in the process. Would you, could you, let me smash? You aim a kick at her, which she nimbly dodges. Would you fuck off, you pink-furred trash? Shit, now she has you doing it. You're almost home, just a little longer. Cadence pouts. Anon just keeps getting meaner. All I want is his tasty w***er. Fuck off! The pout turns into a sly grin. Flying out in front of you, she positions herself so that her rump is in your face. She peers back at you from over her shoulder and shakes her butt. Would you, could you, fast and hot? Would you, could you, up my- Fuck off! Get your fat ass out of my face, you whore! She continues to give you what she thinks is a smoldering look over her shoulder as she continues to fly in front of you. Would you, could you, fill my cup? Would you, could you, knock me out? Too busy trying to get you to stare at her baby cave, Cadence doesn't notice that you've arrived home until she slams face first into your door. She collapses into a heap on your porch, her eyes spinning in her head. Stepping over the dazed pony, you reach into your pocket and pull out your keys. It takes you a moment to unlock your door, having to balance your four large pizzas on one arm. But when you finally manage to open it, you breathe a sigh of relief. Putting your keys back in your pocket, you go to step over the threshold, but pause. You peer down at the pink alicorn, who is now nursing a large goose egg on her forehead, right below her horn. She's looking up at you with big, watery eyes, her lower lip trembling as she sniffles. I just wanted to help you find a mare. 
one that you could fill with love and care. Kneeling down, you look into her eyes. Cadence. She rubs at her eyes with a hoof. Y yes Anon? Why didn't you just say so? I'll happily let you find me a mere friend. Her eyes light up. Really? No. You stand back up and glare down at her. We go through this every fucking year, you stupid cunt. And every year it's the same fucking thing. I tell you again and again and again, but it just doesn't seem to get through that thick skull of yours. I'm going to lay it out for you one last time. You failed eHarmony reject. I do not want you to find me a mare. I do not want them young or old. I do not want them warm or cold. I do not want them with some tuft. I do not want them kind of rough. I do not want them big or small. I do not want them short or tall. I do not want them in twos or threes. I do not want them, can't you see? I do not want to with a fox. I do not want to with some hawks. I do not want to with a pug. I do not want to with some thugs. I do not want to in your throat. I do not want to make you bloat. I do not want to with some hooch. I do not want to get some cooch. I do not want to fast and hot. I do not want to in your plot. I do not want your help today, so kindly fuck off and go away! With that, you slam the door in her face. Leaning against the wood, you close your eyes and let out a tired sigh. <sighs> it takes a moment for you to compose yourself, and it's only when the smell coming from the pizza reaches your nose that you finally move. Kicking off your shoes, you move through the entryway and into the living room. Everything is exactly as you had left it. Dirty clothing lying everywhere, because you couldn't be asked enough to actually put any effort into disposing of them properly after work. Empty nacho mare bags litter the coffee table, along with several empty bottles of soda and booze. Your TV, one of the few things in your house that you actually spent good money on, is currently playing a very old and very cheesy horror movie marathon. And there, lounging on your worn-out couch, her emerald eyes glued to the TV, even as she has a bored expression on her face, is a very large bug pony. What took you so long? Chrysalis asks, not even glancing up as you walk in. I don't want to talk about it. You grunt as you deposit the pizza boxes down onto the empty taco bags. Whatever. Her horn lights up, and she snags two pieces from the topmost box. She takes a huge bite, long strands of cheese dangling off the piece as she pulls it away. Sitting down next to her, you grab a slice of your own before glancing at the TV. So where are we at? The bimbo and the cheerleader are both dead, but the jock is still alive. Nice. You take a bite of pizza, finally able to enjoy the delicious treat that you had worked so hard to acquire today. The melted cheese, the mixing flavor, the crust with just the right amount of crunch. It is all worth it. So, how many movies do we have left? Uh... Three, I think? Good. Chrysalis takes another slice. Watching all these teen ponies bang and get killed really gets the girl going. I'm going to need a pizza of that human dick later. You pause in your chewing and slowly turn your head to stare at her. She gives you a confused look. What? That was awful. From now on, leave the puns to me. Oh yeah? Well, let's see you come up with a better one. You open your mouth to oblige her, only to stop and then shake your head. Ah, uh, 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 never mind. It's way too cheesy. Come on, Twilight. It's the only thing I haven't tried yet. It has to work. Spike, I think you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. When I tell you, I'm pretty sure giving you armpit hair isn't going to make Rarity like you. You're harshing my buzz here, Twy. Oh, thank goodness there's Pinkie Pie. Uh, let's go see what she wants, shall we? This conversation isn't over! Twilight Sparkle sighed as she hopped down the stairs to the library's ground floor, Spike grumbling along behind her. 
Pinkie Pie was standing in the library's open door, looking around slowly as though she was expecting to find someone watching her. Twilight raised an eyebrow and trotted over. Hey, Pinkie. Everything okay? You feeling twitchy? Pinky shook her head. Twilight! I think I found something bad and I don't know what to do about it! The purple unicorn frowned. Pinky was standing fairly still, tail dragging behind her, her usual smile in place, but looking more than a little forced. She wasn't laughing. Ponyville was fucked. Oh no! Is someone dead? Is there a plague? Are we being attacked by dragons? Or zombies? Pinky blinked. What? There hasn't been any zombies in Ponyville since the great zombie epidemic of A56 when Wilhelm and Pie drove back the hordes of undead by luring the parasites out of every forest and getting them to eat the zombies, which of course led to zombie parasites. But it turns out zombie parasites can actually reproduce because they're dead. So a force of marching bands, 500 point strong, sent them back into the castle of doom, destroyed the zombie crown. Free now of Equestria from Lord Nautilus's cold skeletal grip. Twilight gaped. Anyhow, it's nothing that interesting. I was looking through Mr. Cake's movie collection for something to watch for my movie watching party, and I found this. Pinky opened her saddlebag and pulled out a DVD case. Twilight blinked, then levitated it out of Pinky's mouth so she could get a better look. What the... Is that some pony's ass? The biggest ever? Three hours of pure pony pleasure? Pinky, this is a porno! I know that! But Twilight, look at the mirror in the front! All I'm seeing is ass, Pinky. Yellow... Uh, Butterfly-covered... Pink-tailed... <gasps> Celestia's Gaskin, that looks exactly like Fluttershy! Pinky nodded so hard that she almost tipped over. I know! I can't believe it! I never would have thought Fluttershy would do something like this! I mean, maybe Rarity, and I'd be surprised if Dash hasn't, and I could see maybe you, but Fluttershy? Put her in front of a camera and she'd have a heart attack! Much less trying to get her to have sex! Yeah, I know- Wait, me? Twilight's brow furrowed dangerously. You could see me doing pornography, Pinky? What the hell? We all know it's always the nerds are secretly sex fiends, Twilight. Spike, who had seen some of the reading material under Twilight's bed, simply nodded sagely. Look, what Princess Celestia and I happen to do when alone is between us and her video camera, and not available for public consumption. I mean, my personal life is not on trial here. What I'm worried about is what circumstances would drive Fluttershy to do something like this. We should ask her if she needs money at the very least. Whoa, hold on, said Spike. Aren't we jumping to conclusions here? We don't know for sure that's Fluttershy on the box. We just know it looks a lot like her, and I doubt either of you have spent enough time studying her rear end to be able to tell for sure. That's a good point, Twilight said, somewhat deflated. If it isn't Fluttershy, she's gonna be horribly offended when she finds out we assumed she did porn at the drop of a hat. We need to be sure. We should watch the video! Excellent suggestion! What? Look, you two, I'm as curious as any pony, but one thing I am not curious about is watching Fluttershy mate, and definitely not for three hours! What in tarnation did I just walk into? They started, then turned to find Applejack standing in the doorway, staring at the three of them in shock. Twilight blushed and used her magic to swing the library's door securely closed. Oh, Applejack! Pinky nearly sobbed. It's just terrible! Fluttershy's a whore! Applejack's face slowly exploded into an expression of horrified confusion. <sighs> Twilight sighed and levitated the DVD case in front of her. The confusion left Applejack's face as she examined the cover, but the horror remained. What? Y'all aren't telling me that's Fluttershy? You seriously think she cashed in her candy cooter for cold carnage? I can't credit it. I don't know if I believe it either, said Twilight gently. But the evidence is right there. Either some pony is presenting pictures of her posterior to peddle pony pornography and without permission, or Fluttershy is a porn star. Either way, I say we find the ponies responsible and buck their teeth out! 
taking advantage of poor Fluttershy, of all ponies, snarled Applejack. But we don't know for sure. It might be some kind of mistake, said Pinky. Which is why we need to watch it, said Spike, trying not to smile. Uh, I suppose we have to, sighed Twilight. Or at least enough of it to determine whether or not it really is her. Then what are we waiting for? Asked Pinky. Let's pop this sucker in. Pop it into what? This is a library for books, not movies. I don't have a DVD player. But we can't watch it at the cake shop. If Mr. Cake finds out I found his secret stash, he'll be disappointed in me. Don't look at me. We don't even have a TV over at Sweet Apple Acres. I have a hard time enough getting Apple Bloom to do her homework as it is. To watch what? Asked Rarity, aghast. Please, Rarity. We just want to be sure it's actually Fluttershy, so we know how concerned we need to be. I mean, think about it. This is Fluttershy. Blushes when she talks about bunnies doing it. Probably cry when she saw her first unsheathed stallion. Can't even walk in front of a camera without making a squeaking noise that shatters the lens. Fluttershy. Can you imagine what would have to happen to drive her to making pornography? Asked Twilight. Something catastrophic, said Applejack. She must have spent all of her bits on bunnies, with nothing left for herself. Pinky curled up on the ground, shivering, and began speaking in an uncanny imitation of Fluttershy's quiet whisper. Oh, woe is me! For I have given my last bit for rabbit food, and now I shall soon starve. Spike sauntered over to her, gleefully stroking an imaginary mustache. Why, hello, little filly. Looks like you're in a bit of a tight spot. Could I interest you in a job? Oh, yes, sir! Cried Pinky as Fluttershy, hopping onto her hooves. Thank you, sir. I'll do anything you ask, sir. Anything? Oh, oh my. Oh, sir, you wouldn't. You couldn't. That's right. Now get in front of that camera and shake your tail. <laughs> Pinky sobbed theatrically as she waggled her rump in front of a very alarmed Applejack. Oh, but sir, this is so wrong! I'll go to the pony hell! Not my problem. Now here comes your co-star, Bigger Macintosh! Enough. Uh, the theatrics weren't necessary. I'll let you view that thing, sighed Rarity, massaging her forehead with a hoof. And then we've all been proven wrong, then you'll feel all the more foolish for it. Fluttershy would never do anything like this. It takes poise and gravitas to properly perform for a movie of this nature. And I guarantee you, she doesn't have it. How would you know anything about that? Twilight asked suspiciously. Well, you see, I did dabble in acting just a bit before I opened up the boutique. And I may have done a few films that I'm not, um, particularly proud of. Spike's eyes widened, but anything he might have said was cut off by a well-timed hip check from Twilight. Ugh, whatever. Let's just watch this thing. I want to get it over with. And I'd thank you to... Not to insinuate that my big brother ruts in front of cameras for money, said Applejack, glaring at Spike and Pinky. I didn't say that. I was insinuating that you're dead. Pinky shoved a cupcake into his mouth. Rarity set up the DVD player, and they all settled in on her big fluffy couch to watch. Popcorn? Offered Pinky. Rarity shushed her. The movie started off with a techno beat soundtrack, then quickly degenerated into the standard plot. Oh my goodness! I don't have enough bits to pay for the pizza, or this package that's just been delivered. If only I had some way to make it up to both of you gentle colts. Wow, said Applejack. Wow, she's taking the 
whole thing. I really like the music, said Pinky, bouncing up and down in time with the beat. Spike was very quiet. I think you're all missing the obvious here, said Twilight wearily, because that clearly is not Fluttershy. Of course it isn't. That's Mandy Mare. This is her first ever DP scene. Handled it like a pro, in my opinion. Twilight almost jumped out of her fur. Rainbow Dash, what, what are you doing here? You guys were watching porn without me. Frowned the blue Pegasus. I'm insulted. Rarity blinked. How, how could you have possibly known? I have my sources. Whoa, down there now, said Applejack, turning to look at her hovering friend. Dash, you seen this, uh, d movie before? <laughs> seen it? <laughs> I have it on VHS and DVD. Special edition, too. Then y'all here can tell us if this here's the right case or if we've all been hornswaggled. Rainbow Dash blinked as Rarity levitated the DVD cover in front of her. What? That's the right case, yeah. Why would... Oh! Dash grinned wickedly. You guys are watching this because Fluttershy's in it? You perverts! We're not the ones who own three copies of this and never told any pony that poor Fluttershy's been reduced to mating on camera for a living! Rarity was irate. Whoa, 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 hold on! Said Dash, raising her hooves defensively. This isn't what it looks like. Just wait for the hour and 36 minute mark and you'll see what I mean. Twilight levitated the remote control and started fast-forwarding. You guys are no fun, grumped Rainbow Dash. Over the course of an hour and a half, the actors apparently picked up another mare and two stallions in the process of moving to Mandy's bedroom. Just as Twilight hit play, a familiar-looking Pegasus pony nervously crept into frame. The camera immediately zoomed in and focused on her butt. The set was lit up with lurid red spotlights as a fresh batch of stallions leapt into the scene, waving pitchforks. Fluttershy let out a quiet yelp and scampered off. What? Asked Applejack. That's it? Asked Pinkie Pie. Those costumes are hideous, commented Rarity. She was an extra? Twilight was incredulous. Spike remained silent. This film was made a couple of years ago. They needed a Pegasus to damn every pony to pony hell, so they held a casting call without telling any pony exactly what the part was. I brought Fluttershy with me when I auditioned for it, but the director liked her so much, he paid her triple the going rate just for that scene. She used the money to build her house. That is a very gratuitous ass shot for a cameo, said Rarity. Um, hello every pony, said a quiet voice. I've been looking for you all day. What's going on in this? No, Fluttershy! Don't look! No! My secret shame and sin! It's okay, Fluttershy! Wailed Pinky. We're not judging you! I promise we're not judging you! Fluttershy paused in the act of attempting to commit seppuku with Angel Bunny's carrot. Y you you're not? Nah. I think it's pretty cool, actually, said the pink pony. And you have a fantastic ass, said a grinning Rainbow Dash. Fluttershy turned an interesting shade of red. Angel took his carrot back, gave the assembled ponies the bird, and hopped away. So, um, I have to admit to being a little curious now, said Twilight. After you sent them all to Pony Hell, how did this end? Fluttershy blinked then slowly clambered up onto the couch. Well, first they started using the pitchforks, which are all actually husbandry aids. Quoth the author, oh thank god, it's over. And as for me, this is the only time I am ever doing something like this.
Daring Do cried. I am trapped by this evil magician, and literally the only way to free me is if a sexy rainbow main pegasus makes out with a cute yet surprisingly intelligent librarian. If that doesn't happen, I will die. Forever. Rainbow Dash put down the book and stared at the words scrawled across the page, a frown creasing upon her brow. After what seemed like an eternity, she turned to her trusty friend Twilight Sparkle. You know, I think the writing of these books is really going downhill. Twilight fluttered her eyes up at Rainbow Dash as she lounged on. Oh, I don't know Rainbow Dash, she breathed, scooting slightly closer. I think our weekly reading sessions are getting better and better. Shaking her head, Rainbow Dash prodded the open book in front of her. Come on, Twilight! I mean, at least the early Daring Do books were printed. These look like they were quickly hoofwritten. And instead of beautiful cover art, there's just crude stick figures. She slammed the book shut to reveal the hastily scribbled cover of Daring Do and the You Might Be In Love With Your Best Friend, which featured what could charitably be described as a drawing of a pegasus and a unicorn bumping heads together. You know... I've got a good mind to complain to the publishers about this lack of quality. No! Twilight snatched the book back and started to hug it a bit too tightly. I? It's nearly copy, Dash. I don't want any pony to get in trouble for me having it. She gave her most beaming, genuine smile, and slowly, her friend's suspicious gaze abated. Right. Well. Rainbow Dash looked up at the nearest clock. Nearly midday. She stifled a yawn. I think it's time for bed. Yes, yes. Twilight leapt to her hooves with a look of giddy joy suddenly exploding across her face. Oh, Dash, you don't know how long I've waited for this. This is such a good, good idea. Without looking back, Twilight frantically bolted up the stairs. Rainbow Dash stared after Twilight for a few moments. Well, she finally mumbled. I guess Twilight was really, really tired. With that... Rainbow Dash shrugged and trotted nonchalantly outside into the midday sun. She's not coming, is she? Twilight lounged back on her bed, her mane as crumpled as she was as she stared up at the ceiling. It had been nearly an hour since she had seen Rainbow Dash. An hour of eager anticipation that soon turned to puzzlement, and then to despair as she realized she was going to be alone. I guess I misunderstood everything again. Spike rolled his eyes in an exaggerated fashion as he waddled across the room to throw open the curtains, letting the early afternoon sun stream into the room and revealing the sight of a familiar pegasus in the distance, snoozing lazily on a cloud. You think? He gently lifted Twilight's head to dust her pillow, and then let go, letting her head flop listlessly back. Twilight stared at Rainbow Dash with wide, watery eyes. She doesn't love me, does she, Spike? She's never gonna love me. Silly, nerdy Twilight Sparkle. A warm trickle started to tumble down her cheek. Stupid, silly Twilight Sparkle. A pony as wonderful as Rainbow Dash could never love me, Spike. She's so energetic, so talented. What do I have? She let her forehoof sprawl across her duvet. I'm just the princess's star pupil. I only... Oh! Her musings were interrupted by a cloth thrown at her face. Stop wallowing in self-pity and just tell her! Spike snapped, hauling Twilight to a half-sitting position in an attempt to spur her into motion. You don't need to keep pushing on at her with little hints which she'll never get. Joining the Ponyville Decathlon team didn't help, though we don't need to buy any wooden spoons ever again. Just be honest, Twilight. You don't need any potions or tricks or magic spells. Yes, that's it! Twilight clapped her forehooves together, her eyes shining with excitement. You're a genius, Spike! Spike wiped his brow. Mm, thanks, Twy. I knew you'd see sense. A magic spell? Twilight continued, hopping down from her bed as she started to scurry amongst the piles of ancient manuscripts piled around it. If Star Swirl won't come to the mountain, the mountain must come to Star Swirl! Spike choked in a mixture of horror and confusion. You're gonna do what with who now? Twilight stared out of the window again, 
a soft sigh escaping her lips at the sight of the gently sleeping Rainbow Dash in the distance. Every day, Rainbow Dash goes to sleep on a cloud. What if, Spike? What if I was that cloud? <gasps> she grasped Spike hard by the shoulders, her face beaming with unrestrained enthusiasm. Then we would be sleeping together in each other's warm embrace. Oh, what bliss! She drew Spike into a quick hug, as if imagining he was Rainbow Dash. And then, once we're done, I'll reveal myself and Rainbow Dash will realize she loved me all along! I don't know, Twilight. Spike sucked his bottom lip in, eyes rigid with fear. This sounds like a really bad idea, but I can't put my claw on why. Don't worry, Spike. There is absolutely no way this can go wrong. Twilight gave a firm nod before continuing her search amongst her books. Trust me! Okay, Spike, you know what you have to do? Spike gave a mute nod as he gripped the wand in his little claws, shaking slightly from the nervous anticipation. Twilight had been a buzz of activity for the past 24 hours, rifling through what seemed like every book in the library at breakneck speed and creating a worrying amount of mess. He grimaced at the tip the library had become. Twilight didn't seem concerned at all as she perched proudly upon a stack of fallen books, peering periodically out of the window at the perfectly blue sky. Okay, Spike, it's nearly midday. Any moment now, Rainbow Dash will be flying about looking for a cloud, and I want to be that cloud. I am going to cast a complex transmogrification spell on myself. I won't be able to turn myself back, so once I'm done, I'll float back down and you'll tap me with that specially charged anti-magic wand. Got it? Spike clutched the wand to his chest as if a comfort blanket. I... Uh, I guess, Twilight. But surely there's a better way. No, Spike. This is it! Twilight puffed out her chest. This is how I'm going to get Rainbow Dash to love me. I'm going to be nymphocumulus. I'm going to put the ca- I'm going to have to stop you there, Twilight. Spike flinched. No. Just... No. Fine. Twilight bristled as she raised her head. Wish me luck. With that, her horn flared into a cone of purple light, which quickly exploded in a glittering shower, consuming her from view. Spike flung one arm over his eyes to protect himself from the blazing light show. Twilight! He squeaked frantically as the very room began to shudder and shake. Twilight! Without warning, the purple glow ceased and all was still. Spike nervously uncovered his eyes and gasped in shock. Where there was once a purple unicorn, there was now a fluffy white cloud floating peacefully in the air. You, you did it! What's it like? The cloud continued to bob up and down silently. Oh, right. Clouds can't speak. Spike looked at the wand in his claw, unsure of whether to tap Twilight with it now and stop the madness. He reluctantly decided against it. There was no telling the amount of resentment directed at him that might cause. It was better to make sure the only one Twilight had to blame was herself. From outside, a familiar rainbow streak caught Spike's eye. That's your cue, Twilight! Go! Get her! At that, the cloud slowly rose and floated through the library door. Spike shook his head. It was going to be a long day. Twilight floated faster and faster out of the door. She had cast a rudimentary sensory spell to enable her to see and hear, but during her frantic rampage through the library, she had not been able to find any spells which would allow a cloud to speak. It was probably for the best, though. She did not want to accidentally cry out in ecstasy and alert Rainbow Dash to her deception. Nothing could have prepared her for the effects of the spell. She no longer felt solid. Instead, she felt a warm, fuzzy feeling, almost light-headed, as she drifted through the air, faster and faster. There was a liberating freeness to the experience. It wasn't like her previous experiences with flying. She was no longer trying to force herself up into the air. Instead, it was almost as if she was a part of the sky. Twilight let herself go, 
sighing inwardly in contentment as she let herself roll lazily into the blue sky, climbing higher and higher as the wind drifted across her fluffy form. Through the magical haze which she had cast upon herself, she could keenly sense Rainbow Dash flying nearby. If Twilight had still had a heart, it would have been racing with anticipation at this upcoming moment of bliss. But instead, she merely pulsed happily, unfurling wispy fronds of cloud to look all the more inviting to Rainbow Dash. Twilight would have given a squeal of utter delight as four perfect blue hooves touched down upon her, but thankfully she had no voice to speak with. It was Rainbow Dash, treading lightly on Twilight's cloud body to get a comfortable place to rest before snuggling down. Rainbow Dash's body was soft and warm. Twilight almost lost herself in bliss at that moment. The perfect feeling of Rainbow Dash pressing against her, engulfed in an unknowing but loving hug. Oh, Rainbow, Rainbow Dash! Twilight wanted to cry, as she felt herself throbbing with uncontrolled joy at the very closeness of the wonderful pony. Rainbow Dash's head flopped into the cloud, and Twilight pressed her fluffy form to it in a loving nuzzle. She didn't even mind when a trickle of drool spilled out of Rainbow Dash's mouth. Together, they drifted across the sky, Twilight gently rocking Rainbow Dash from side to side, tenderly brushing her wispy fronds across her belly. Once Rainbow Dash was settled, Twilight mused, she could move on to loving her friend even more tenderly. All she needed was time. Hi, Rainbow Dash, you lazy old pony. Snap to it. Rainbow Dash awoke with a start, blinking in confusion at the voice drawling at her from far below. She gave a scowl. Somehow, she had floated over Sweet Apple Acres and gained the attention of the one pony who could never be happy to see Rainbow Dash get her well-deserved rest. What do you want, Applejack? She shouted down, stamping on her cloud bed in annoyance. Twilight gave a start as her blissful embrace was rudely interrupted with a hoof to her cloud face. Applejack shook a hoof up at Rainbow Dash. Y'all being lazy while those hard-working ponies are sweating growing food for y'all. Be useful for once, Dash. Fill up this here water barrel with your cloud. She pointed at an empty water barrel that sat next to a dilapidated outhouse. Rainbow Dash rolled her eyes in an exaggerated fashion. Fine, Applejack! But you owe me one, right? She grasped the sides of the cloud and started to manoeuvre it downwards. For some strange reason, it seemed to want to float in the opposite direction, as if it was struggling against her. But Rainbow Dash wasn't one to be beaten by a cloud. Flaring up her wings, she started to beat out broad, powerful strokes as she pushed the cloud down towards the water barrel. No, Rainbow Dash, no! Twilight tried to scream out, but the lack of any lungs thwarted her attempts at warning her friend. Despite her attempts to escape, Rainbow Dash was just too strong a flyer, and she found herself pulled down towards the ground. She quickly glanced about in the desperate hope that Spike was nearby, ready to leap out and save her. Her hopes were in vain. This won't take a moment, Applejack. Fastest ring cloud pony in the West! Rainbow Dash positioned the cloud directly above the barrel and planted her hooves firmly at each corner. You've just got to know how to treat clouds right! She gave a wink and then began to leap up and down on the cloud at a dizzying pace. Almost immediately, the cloud gave what sounded like a squeal of thunder, and a shower of water droplets began to tumble from it. Twilight cried in confusion as she felt Rainbow Dash's hooves pounding her very soul again and again. She felt even fuzzier as parts of her began to condense into rain and splash into the bucket, rending her in two. It was like the sensation of falling forever. Intangible hooves desperately trying to grasp onto something, but instead finding only the cruel stamping of Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash continued to tread on the cloud until it got smaller and smaller, its fluffy body compacting into rain, until finally the last of the cloud stuff vanished with a pop. Wiping her forehead, she gave a quick flourish in the air and landed on the ground next to the now full water barrel, a grin on her face. Bet you've never seen anything so fast. Bet I've never seen such a big show off. Applejack shook her head as she started to trot away. Thanks, Rainbow Dash. But next time, 
Make sure the weather patrol keeps the barrels full in the first place. I've got a busy farm to run. As Applejack turned away, Rainbow Dash stuck her tongue out at her departing friend. I don't tell you how to do your job. Don't tell me how to do mine. She mumbled under her breath, wiping her forehead again. Yeah, <sighs> turning that cloud into rain sure was thirsty work. I bet Applejack wouldn't mind if I grab a quick drink. Twilight awoke with a start, suddenly slamming back into consciousness as if the brakes on a cart had suddenly been pulled. Fighting off the momentary disorientation, she took stock of her surroundings. She was trapped. Her body felt so sluggish and heavy, her thoughts sloshing around in her head. I'm water, she exclaimed internally, feeling around the sides of the barrel with her new aquatic form. There was no way to move or speak. She would be stuck until Spike came to rescue her. She felt a shadow loom above her, a pair of blue lips leaning over the barrel and descending towards her. Oh, Rainbow Dash, you do love me! Twilight tried to cry out as Rainbow Dash's head bobbed into view, that perfect mouth ready to touch the surface of the water. Yes, yes. kiss me, Rainbow Dash, kiss me! Rainbow Dash! Rainbow Dash! Spike finally waddled over the last hilltop, wheezing as he sought to catch his breath, clutching the wand as if his life depended on it. He had given chase as soon as Twilight had floated off with Rainbow Dash, but his tiny dragon legs had rendered him unable to catch up with the pair, and he had been forced to watch from a distance as Twilight was turned into rain. Whatever you do, don't touch the water in the barrel. It's really Twilight Sparkle. Spike half leapt at the barrel, pushing the wand into its depths. Nothing happened. He peered into the barrel. It was empty. Rainbow Dash lounged beside the barrel, letting loose a loud burp as she patted her stomach guiltily. I can't believe what a thirst I worked up. What was that about Twilight? Spike stared at Rainbow Dash for a moment, and then shook his head. Don't worry, I think she'll find the way out. <laughs>